Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. Today I'll show you what I've been doing the last couple of weeks here on the Hemisphere server, which is a project that I wanted to do for over two years. I've built a quarry and I'm super happy about it. It's such a super cool contraption. It's a small one, just over a hundred blocks wide, but it generates crazy amounts of resources. After running it for about 80 blocks, I've already got all of the terracotta, all of the sandstone, and all of the cobble deep slate I'll ever need, along with a ton of other resources, including sand. I found a nice spot with enough mesa to give me a healthy amount of terracotta, but the rest is desert, which includes sand. Here's what kind of items you can expect. Pause the video if you want to have a good look at it. including more diorite that I could ever burn. I won't go into details because there's a fantastic video about quarry building by JKM, who explain all the details you need to know if you want to build a quarry yourself. And I basically followed this tutorial, but let's give you the cliff notes. You start with a trench that is about 20 blocks deep and just a few blocks wider than your quarry will be, which I did using simple TNT duper flying machines. This is why the walls aren't really smooth. Then you need a tunnel bore to clear eight blocks below the quarry. Here using the double shot version by Desu. I set the whole thing just above bedrock because I may build a few high efficiency farms here later if I decide to widen this using a world eater. The drawback of course is that there's much more lava below y equals minus 55. But all things considered, it's not too bad. There's the occasional lava lake that has to be cleared. The next step is to build some trenches that generate a three wide trench. I use the design by voiding, which can handle one type of liquid. But as all trenches that I know, it will break if lava and water mix to cover the trench and cobble. So you have to clear one type of liquid, typically the lava. And the quarry itself is the Vertical Duper Quarry version 2.1 by Desu Desu and Javierto Cerrado. It's a really clever design. It first tries to push blocks away, which gets rid of all liquids and holds. Then it pulls out the blocks that can't be pushed, flushes water in the gap to protect the blocks behind it, and then dupes TNT to break the blocks and let them fall into the water collection system down below. You will have to remove all of the blocks that are blast resistant, like obsidian and spawners. JKM explains how to find these in this video. I just made a small modification to the design that delays the TNT duping just a bit so that most of the sand and gravel will be collected by adding these extensions here. The quarry at this size along with the tunnel bore and the trenches, comes in at about 25,000 blocks that are placed manually and about 20k more blocks for the initial wall that we need. This would be this wall which went down all the way when I started the quarry. But these 20k blocks were placed using a Mangos conveyor belt system and concrete powder, which was turned to concrete with water. The lag is very moderate. This quarry comes in at about 4 MSPT on average. The storage was a bit of a head scratcher. The issue is that the quarry needs about 9 minutes for each slice, but the block breaking is about only 3 minutes. So we have a ton of blocks coming in in a short time. My solution to the storage issue is to buffer these items. This is a simple system where each hopper collects items at double hopper speed and pushes them into a dropper. The droppers go into these water streams. Then items are grouped to stacks by the slab here and go to the nether. We power the dropper using a slower clock and this essentially spreads out the items over time. It also changes the distribution a bit. The quarry produces mostly co cobble deep slate, cobblestone and sandstone here in the desert. Pretty much all of the deep slate will go in the first few hoppers, the cobble into the next hoppers and therefore we have a fairly constant stream of deep slate and cobble over time. This buffer is just fast enough to handle the output. My test creative gave a total average of about 90,000 blocks per hour or roughly 10 times hopper speed. So I set this buffer to output items at 12 times hopper speed, which works just fine. 
and the buffer is easy enough that I can just rebuild it once the quarry has moved out of range, so that item transport here is no longer feasible. The collection in the nether is a bit of a mess, but it does the trick. I didn't really know what to expect and which problems I would run into, so I just built a very simple system 4 times hopper speed cobble collection, 3 times hopper speed deep slate collection. Then I built an array of shulker box loaders, where I could decide later which items to collect where, and it turned out I needed two more slices for both cobble and deep slate. And at the end, I have a catch all system of four shulker box loaders handling mixed items. So anything that goes past the filters will be collected here, which is mainly the occasional mob drop or blocks like mossy cobble. I will still get some blocks like cobble and deep slate and sandstone that should be collected because my item distribution isn't anywhere near perfect and sometimes the amount of items just overwhelms the sorter here. So these blocks will all go into the catch-all. And I added a shulker box unloader here. So I'll take the items from the catch-all, unload them here and do another go of sorting these into the system here. At the start I would get a lot more items in here, so a ton of items would land here in the generic shulker box loaders, but in time I realized which items I should add to the sorting array. I might actually add another filter for cobble and for deep slate. The collection fits into a 2x3 chunk area, which has one chunk loader here. The initial portal is bit, uh, built a bit to the side, two chunks away, so I need a second chunk loader to make sure that this one is running. But as the quarry progresses, this portal will move in this direction here. Anyway, this part of the system can be rebuilt really easily. And essentially the items will just come out at the lowest portal that we have here. I consider to build a storage in the overworld and just route the item through the nether. But I quite like it to have my farm outputs in the nether on the roof. So I can just fly here and grab whatever I need, even though I can't use water streams in the nether. You'll notice that I used some lighting blocks. Now, light updates are a performance killer, but we have a solid roof to block out skylight. Using only local light sources allowed me to build everything without a mob switch, as this is not a technical server and I don't want to spoil the creeper fun for other players. The performance impact isn't too bad. The extra light sources cost less than 10% lag, even if the quarry runs empty, that is, no item transport. And it was pretty much smooth sailing in the building phase. Of course, I built the roof last. I also run the quarry from an AFK point, just under the build limit. So we don't have to worry about mobs. You'll find a world download in the description that puts everything together and is essentially a light medica copy of the quarry I built. Once again, thanks to JKM for his fantastic quarry video, do check it out. And special thanks to you subscribers and Xizuma and DocM from Hermitcraft. This channel now has a thousand subscribers, which I never expected when I started it two years ago. You guys rock! So thanks for watching, leave a like if you want to see more content like this, leave a comment if you have remarks or questions, and perhaps can help me to do a better storage system. And see you next time, bye bye!